In James Fenimore Cooper's novel, The Last of the Mohicans, a dramatic battle was waged at Fort William Henry in upstate New York. It was an attack on a British fort by a large contingent of Canadian militia, French regulars and Native Americans, an attack that ended in defeat for the British. This battle was part of a larger war, the French and Indian War, a war that would determine the fate of the North American continent. Canada and America grew up together. They were created to promote the welfare of their respective mother countries, France and England. Canada, called New France at the inception of the war, was mostly one large military outpost from Fort Lewisburg on Cape Breton Island to Fort Michilimack in Michigan. In many ways, New France was better prepared for war. It had by far the largest holding of the North American continent. More importantly, most of the Native American nations supported the French. New France's greatest weakness, on the other hand, were its tiny white population, only 55,000 compared to over one million settlers in the British colony, and the lack of industry so that it depended on imports from France for its war goods. These would eventually prove to be its fatal flaws. The French and Indian War was a continuation of the War of Jenkins' Ear, which had allowed the British colonies a toehold west of the Appalachians, land the French claimed as their own. The war began when a young George Washington, leading a contingent of Virginia militia near Uniontown, Pennsylvania, ordered his men to fire on the small party of French. A year later, the well-known British General Braddock and a small army were routed at the same place. Known as the Battle of the Wilderness, this decisive defeat of the British forces and American militia turned the French and Indian War into the bitter North American campaign it would become. Two men, who would later become famous Americans, fought at this defeat, George Washington and Daniel Boone. Washington wrote of this engagement, we've been beaten most shamefully beaten by a handful of men. Thus the first round went to the French, as did much of the early war. Part of the reason for the British defeat was that the French had adopted the Indian style of fighting, hiding behind rocks and trees. This style would later be copied by the colonial militias in the Revolutionary War. In the first three years of the war, the French won handily in battles along the western frontier and on the border with Canada. However, in 1758, William Pitt came into power in England and brought with him a new approach to the war. I believe that I can save this nation and that no one else can, William Pitt. The old British strategy was to contain the French in the New World while winning the war in Europe. Pitt turned this completely around. He made America the main theater of the war and launched a global North American campaign, sending the best military minds to the New World. The strategy worked. In 1758, General Forbes occupied an abandoned Fort Duquesne in western Pennsylvania. While in New York, William Johnson captured Fort Niagara. General Jeffrey Amherst seized Ticonderoga. And John Bradstreet took Fort Frontenac. In 1759, the brilliant commander James Wolfe, whose forces had taken Fort Louisburg a year earlier, captured Quebec at the cost of his own life. A year later, Montreal surrendered and Canada belonged to Britain. The French and Indian War officially ended in 1763 with a treaty signed in Paris. France gave up Nova Scotia, Cape Britain, and all the rest of Canada. In addition, France gave Britain all the territory east of the Mississippi except New Orleans. In return, France got back its Caribbean islands and Britain returned Cuba to Spain in exchange for Western Florida. The battle for the North American continent was over and the British had won. For the American colonies, the effects of the French defeat were emphatic. With the French out of the way in North America, the colonies no longer needed the British for protection from outside enemies. The war also showed that the military men of the colonies, men like Washington and Johnson, were equal to, if not better, than their British counterparts. Lastly, the most important effect of the defeat was political. 
The war gave rise to the notion that the colonies could work together for their own defense. And that would lead, after 20 years of oppressive British rule, to the American Revolution. <laughs>